Yeah, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I note from the uh, robust and distinguished uh, agenda today that there was a lot of attention focused on foreign aid and I'm sure uh, on Western donors as was highlighted in our previous speaker. So there's probably a lot of fervor in the room, you know, pointing fingers at those Western donors and everything that they've done. So I take full responsibility. Um, no, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as, as was said in the introduction, I, I'm a development practitioner. I work for the U.S. Agency for International Development. Uh, I've been in development work for about 20 years. Somewhere along the way, I did get a master's degree, but I won't claim to have the uh, level of knowledge and, and sort of academic excellence of some of the professors that, that are in the room. But I can tell you, and what I'm prepared to tell you about is, is some of the practicalities of what USAID does here, why, why do we do it, and what our focus, our orientation, our programming in democracy and governance is all about. Um, and then I'm happy to answer some questions at the end. Um, just in general, uh, USAID and Ghana have an over 50 years uh, collaborative partnership. Uh, Ghana is currently a very important country for the United States uh, administration and for USAID. It's a strategic partner. It's one of two countries on the African continent that we've designated as Africa focused countries, which means that we are concentrating a number of initiatives and programmatic efforts uh, to support both Ghana and Tanzania, which is the other country. Um, there are multiple US government initiatives. Some of them are presidential initiatives from the Obama administration. Some of them are USAID initiatives, which are concentrating on, on Ghana, including the Partnership for Growth, uh, which is a collaborative arrangement uh, between the two governments. Um, USAID Forward is a set of initiatives uh, which describes how we are reforming our business practices and procurement reform, and I'll say something about that in a minute. Um, and then there's a number of different initiatives, Feed the Future, Global Health, uh, Malaria, HIV AIDS Prevention, Global Climate Change, and some others. And so uh, for us, uh, as staff members of USAID Ghana, we find it to be a very busy place to work because there is a lot of activity. Um, and and even though I'm, I'm highlighting things that are the orientation and interest of the United States government, it is very much the, the cornerstone, the foundation of our work that we are working in partnership with the government of Ghana and the people of Ghana, and that our activities are consistent with the Ghana shared growth uh, and development uh, agenda. Um, what do we do here with USAID Ghana? We work in four areas or four development sectors. Economic growth, which includes agriculture, and we have a very large program, both ongoing and upcoming, uh, supporting commercial agricultural development, particularly in the north of Ghana. Um, we have a very large health program that's working in some of the areas I already mentioned, malaria, HIV, AIDS, maternal child health. Uh, we have an education program, particularly focused because USAID made a decision some years ago to really concentrate our efforts on primary school education and primary literacy because that's seen as really the springboard for the success of children in their learning throughout their lives. Um, and democracy and governance, uh, which I am the manager of and I'll spend much more time talking about. Um, collectively, USAID's assistance to Ghana is in the range of about 100 million US dollars per year. Um, and we are working on, on the, we work on the basis of five-year strategies and five-year uh, agreements with the uh, government of Ghana. We are right now in the process of developing a new strategy, um, and we are having a lot of consultations with government partners, NGO partners, donor, uh, donors that we work with. Um, but to give you a sense, and we've had a lot of debate about uh, what's our position, you know, and I think in the context of what you've been talking about today, we have internally been facing what is the most effective role of our assistance, uh, how far has Ghana come and is coming along, and, and where do we provide inputs that will be meaningful. And basically, the spirit of what we are looking at in the new strategy, and I'll, I'll give you a hint with our, our goal statement, um, is facilitating Ghana's transition to an aid dependency free future. So it's in our, it's in our 
analysis and our understanding that Ghana is very rapidly uh, coming to a position where it is fully self-reliant in its own development and in the management of uh, a number of these social sectors and other areas. Um, different donor, a number of the donors here um, from different European countries, from, from Japan, from different areas have a similar mentality um, and people are having some debates about, well, what is the point really where donors have worked themselves out of a job and, and it is entirely an aid dependency free environment? And people are differing on whether that's a five year or a 10 year or a 20 year horizon. I think for us in USAID, we're not making any kind of proclamation about that, um, but we think that we're trying to set the conditions in this five year period so that perhaps in the next strategy period, it's very likely that you know, USAID might look at transitioning. Um, another important thing to note that under the USAID Forward, which is a global initiative for us, uh, we are making serious efforts uh, at what we call international procurement reform. And USAID does its business and historically does its business by providing funds to contractors and grantees, um, which are often internet, it could be US or international firms other NGOs, um, international NGOs, and, and host country NGOs. Um, and that has sometimes, that modality has sometimes removed some of the ownership and leadership from the host country partners. And so we are making concerted efforts to build direct funding relationships with our host country partners, including government of Ghana institutions. So it's, we're entering a new day of how we work directly with uh, government of Ghana institutions, as well as uh, Ghanaian NGOs and, and CSOs, civil society organizations. So this spirit of procurement reform is informing a lot of how we do our activities and we plan for new activities. Um, within the democracy and governance portfolio that I manage, our focus over the next strategic period, we've set our development objective as strengthening democratic governance. And, and our spirit in that is both is uh, working along with the government and the people of Ghana, both in the supply side of governance, so the everyday work that, that local government, regional government, national government officials are doing, uh, strengthening capacity, supporting training, um, providing assistance uh, to improve the quality of the supply of governance which is provided by the government, and then also working on the demand side of government, and that's when you know, people are communicating, citizens are communicating to their government, these are the services that I want and that I expect, this is the quality of services, this is the transparent information that I would like from my government officials. So those things, in, in, in my mind, they come together in what we're describing as democratic governance, but addressing both the, the push and the pull, the supply and the demand. Um, our, our focus, on, and we're working in three areas within democracy and governance, and, and those areas were identified both through a national level democracy and governance assessment, which we conducted in 2011, and through a lot of consultation and a lot of listening to our uh, governmental partners. Um, but the three areas that, that we are working in particularly is local governance strengthening, uh, civil society, and election systems. So local governance strengthening, civil so society support, and, and election si systems strengthening. Um, to say a little bit more on that, um, of course Ghana, on the local governance side, of course Ghana is going through uh, a decentralization process that is, you know, uh, political, fiscal, administrative, and it's moving at different, different paces and at different levels. Um, there are political reforms that, and even possibly a, a, you know, a referendum that would be required to move some aspects of the political decentralization. Meanwhile, other aspects of administra administrative are moving forward and fiscal as well. Uh, but for us, that we've seen. While a number of donors are, are supporting different aspects of the decentralization process, we at USAID feel it's very important to provide some further strengthening support to 
the MMDAs, the Metropolitan Municipal District Assemblies, and particularly the District Assemblies. Um, we've had an ongoing program in Western Region that's working with District Assemblies uh, to help their planning capability, um, to help them manage and increase their internally generated funds, um, and also to help them in how they engage with their, the citizens that they represent. Uh, we're also, this, is, uh, this program is, goes by the acronym LOGODEP, or Local Governance and De Decentralization Program. Um, they've been doing a lot of things on street naming, house numbering, you may have heard some of that in the news uh, recently. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, some new, a new decentralization program uh, that may have much more uh, public accountability um, and auditing components in there. Um, and also we, you know, something with our new governance program is that we really want to, when we do it this time, we're going to pair the programmatic intervention with a impact evaluation that tests a few different select methods of intervention and really tries to determine from a scientific perspective which one of these methods had the greatest impact in leading to uh, improvements in governance. And, you know, improvements in satisfaction of the citizenry and their government. So USAID is also working to become a more technically sound, scientifically based uh, development agency. Um, within civil society, uh, we're working broadly uh, to support civil society organizations in Ghana and particularly how they engage with the government to demand responsive, transparent, and accountable services. Um, because we also believe in donor harmonization uh, and the principles of uh, aid effectiveness as, um, as reflected in the Paris Declaration and the Accra Agenda for Action, uh, we decided that we would work with a number of other donors uh, under what's called the STAR Ghana mechanism. So strengthening transparency, accountability, and responsiveness in Ghana. Um, Star Ghana includes four, if not five, other donors. Uh, the UK, Danita, European Union, us. I know the Canadians we're looking at, but I'm not sure I, if they're going to come on board. Um, and we have uh, contributed money into a common pool, um, and then that pool provides funding according to thematic waves to Ghanaian uh, CSOs. Uh, particularly, one, you know, one area of particular note has been the oil and gas sector, uh, communicating uh, communities' interests you know, in what should happen with some of the development assistance, corporate res social responsibility, and you know, other outcomes from oil and gas development. Um, the third area, election systems. Um, USAID has supported elections-related activities um, since in the 2000, 2004, 2008, and now. Um, this time, and I met, you know, I mentioned a few minutes ago about how USAID has sometimes worked through international contractors and international partners. In our assessment of, of what we would support this year, we made a determination that absolutely we could work directly with Ghanaian institutions, and that's what we decided to do. Um, and we have, we have a long relationship uh, working with CDD, the Center for De Democratic Development, and, and we determined that they were best placed uh, to manage our funding this time. And so we, we do have uh, about a 1.2 million grant uh, with CDD to support elect electoral monitoring and observation. And that's linked, uh, of course, CDD linked with CODEO. And we're also working directly with the uh, Electoral Commission, uh, supporting <coughs> Excuse me. Supporting some of their efforts towards public information, and we also, it's it's a bit of a work in process, but we're very interested in in helping the electric electoral commission achieve their vision of being a thought leader and a trainer for election officials and civil society throughout uh, West Africa and the Africa continent. And they're they're working to stand up uh, the Kumasi Training Center, which you know as sort of a center of excellence in, in election practices. And so we, along with the European uh, Union and some others, are supporting that. Um, in the future, I have a sense that 
funding some of the practical day-to-day -day elements of election processes, even including observation, may not really be necessary to be supported by international donors. I mean, certainly the capacity and knowledge exists within CDD, within many of the other organizations within the GEC. And it may be likely that we might concentrate our efforts more on really addressing specific targeted issues, like, for example, possibly the, the role and participation of women in the election process, um, ensuring that political parties are incorporating issues that are of concern to women in their uh, platforms, that uh, women who wish to run, <coughs> who wish to be candidates, uh, are supported and have the opportunity. So, so we may focus much more narrowly in, in the future just with technical assistance uh, rather than sort of a, a foreign aid provision role. Um, I guess I just, uh, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to present. And then, uh, you know, we could go to question and answer. But I, I did, I did want to comment, you know, just real quickly on a little, one of the things from the professor, you know, that represents a challenge of foreign aid and I think is, is that you, you can face a question of uh, where, is, where is the focus in foreign assistance? And, and do you want to provide funding in a way that helps set the conditions um, for Ghana's own development? Or do you sometimes want to fund the work? Because sometimes a number of our organizations or institutions want us to just fund the work. Um, and it, it can be, be a dilemma because uh, if you say if you want the work of 6,000 Codeo elections observers getting out there, that is a costly endeavor. Uh, and so, um, you know, so sometimes we just look at both sides. We can, we can be helpful in providing funding to doing the work. And then and there's other times where really we think that we should be working on a policy issue or something that is creating an enabling environment for that to move forward. I also want to just say in elections that I, I personally believe, and it's a perspective of our office, that transparency and accountability in the elections process is, is absolutely, absolutely important. Um, and that we're working with our partners you know, to, uh, to conduct themselves in such a way and to carry out their work you know, that will demonstrate the highest degree of transparency and a public accountability. And, and with that, I'm open to uh, any questions. So thank you very much.